Thanks. Father, I just want to say thank you for um, uh, an opportunity to be here. I thank you because you're the one that has made this happen. I pray that even as we study, the Lord will hear and learn from you and will understand what we need to do and will go out and do it. Give us that power in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you can hear me all right. Can we all hear me? Yes. Thank you. Good morning, Max. Good to see you. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the minister of the word. And um, it was a challenge trying to find the right graphic for this. But then the Holy Spirit inspired me. And I brought a data because that is what it means to minister. To minister means to serve. I was checking, I was checking Google and Google was telling me that the minister, a minister is example, a head of a government, member of the clergy and acts as a minister of religion. But well, the one that I was looking at as a verb is to minister, to attend to the needs of someone, to take care of, look after, treat, attend. And that's the one that came to my head. So not the man of God, not the uh, minister of the government, not any of that. What came to my mind was to attend to the word of God, to attend to the needs of the word. For those of us that might not understand, the word of God is um, Jesus himself. God himself is his word. Jesus is his word. So when we are ministering to the word, we are ministering, we are attending to, um, in Proverbs, it says, um, pay attention, my son and daughter, but my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. So attending to, ministering to the word, that is what we'll be speaking about today the minister of the word and that is you that is me Um, last week we were talking about the sword of the spirit and one of the things we mentioned was the armor of god which was the belt of truth breastplate of righteousness shoes of peace shield of faith helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit and we're talking about how the sword of the spirit was used and um, how um paul was talking about using the armor to explain the armor the armor that um the romans used to use to explain um the different things that god had given us and i remember i mentioned that it was interesting that he says the armor of god and i said armor of god this is god's own armor and he has given this to us and one part of it is the sword of the spirit and the sword of the spirit i'll show you it's not it's not like this mighty big sword like the one that i have here but actually is it actually a really not that big a sword just something like that for close hand-to-hand -hand combat because sometimes you need to fight hand-to-hand -hand combat with a lot of things that come really close to you. They are not far off. They are very close to you. You're actually what you need at that time. And you know, last week, I had that a challenge and I did not use the sword. I didn't even remember to use the sword. It was when, when later I was going, when I, I, I went to bed, and I was now thinking about the day and I was wondering why that why why the day had gone the way it had. I was I was supposed to be in a in a teams meeting or not a teams meeting, a project teams meeting, yes, in a teams meeting. And um we're all supposed to be contributing and I was blank. I could not remember anything, I could not think of anything, and I did not, I could not even pray. I could not do anything. I was just blank for the whole meeting. The whole meeting was the whole day. I just want you to have that in mind. Just imagine somebody just sitting down there and they're asking, does anybody have any contributions? And the person just keeps quiet. In my mind, I was thinking, why did I go all the way to meet for this? So I was, it was just a terrible, for me, it was just a, when I was coming back on the trip, I was just feeling so down. I could not understand what had happened. My mind was clouded. I could not even speak. I could not talk. And so as I was going to bed that day, and I was just saying in my head, though, I wasn't even speaking in that in my head, I was just thinking, God, what happened here? I don't, I don't even understand what happened here. And then it was later than that the next morning, after some things that happened at night, but it was the next morning that I now realized that I didn't speak. I didn't say anything. When these things were happening, I was just in my head, I was just thinking, we can talk now. We can talk now. Talk now. What's going on? Just talk. 
That was all I was saying. It's all me to be speaking word. Mm. So hand to hand combat. So I said, Ah, God, thank you very much for reminding me about the sword of the spirit. It will not happen again. I did not pass that test. But the next test that comes, I will remember. I have learned my lesson and I'm going to fight that fight that needs to be fought with the word. So that is what this that's what the word of God comes because there's so many as in it was later that I, that in the word said coming, and I was not like, ah. After I finished repenting and asking God for help, for forgiveness, I said, God, I've just asked you for help because you're, for, you're ever present, you're the very present help in times of trouble. And I was in trouble and I didn't even ask. I was just there thinking, oh, okay, we know you need to talk. You need to get out of this. this, this. That's what I was just saying. The devil is wicked. I'm not blaming the devil for this one. I'm not, okay? I'm not blaming, I'm blaming, I blame myself. I blame myself. So <laughs> I blame myself. So please. That's one of my, that's my own, uh, well, I call it testimony because you, know, you, you, you learn a lot from people's, both, um, uh, people's examples, both good and bad. And that's why everybody's failures and successes was written in the word of God, because it was supposed to encourage us and inspire us to not to follow up and um, follow out, but also see how they go out of the mistakes and how they go into those mistakes that they did and how they go out. So don't think that everybody is perfect. And I don't think everybody's perfect. Me, I'm far from perfect. So I hope this encourages you. If maybe you messed up and you didn't remember anything that I spoke about, if me that this that's the teacher, because I don't have to repent. I said, God, you know, I will not be a cast away after I finish teaching these days. It won't happen again. I said, Lord, let this test come again. I will not. By the grace of God, I I believe, Lord, I will not I will not fall into the same problem again if it comes in any other way. So maybe this week we are talking about the minister of the word, and maybe this week you might be tested about me about ministering of the ministry ministry of the word. So of, about you being a minister of the word. So don't think that okay, well, all these things are happening, all these things that we are teaching is just for talk or anything we're actually learning things and we will be tested you know when we go to school uh when we have classes we, we go through exam and we pass or we fail and i don't want you to like that's what i was saying because i said i was i, I think at first i was starting to feel really bad that i failed that test but then i now said it was just a test i did not pass i have recovered i've come back i now know where i failed i don't know why i felt that i'm not going to allow the devil to because the word of god also says and I had to tell myself, then therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. I had to start speaking to myself. So the word of God is by your mind. You have to say it out loud. Say the word, say the word, say the word. That is what we spoke about last week, basically. So the minister of the word, and I've said what, what it means, what um, where we're coming from about the minister of the word. And it's about, um, and it's about um, attending to, taking care of, the word and but in a different way to this is the memory verse that we're reading from mark chapter 3 verse 14 and it says and he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach if you can unmute please unmute so that we can say it together i just told you about speaking the word so if you can unmute please unmute and say and he and say after me so i'll just wait for anyone that can unmute to unmute and say after me <clears throat> Um, Mark chapter 3 verse 14 Mark chapter, Mark chapter 3 verse 14 and he ordained 12 and he ordained, and he ordained 12. that they should be with him that they, that they should, should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and that he and might that send them forth to preach. preach Mark chapter 3 verse 14 Mark chapter 3 verse 14 and he ordained 12 and that they should be with him that they should be with him. and that he might send them forth to preach and that he might send them forth to preach thank you very much well done you can you can now miss well done that was very good um so from this verse, one of the things that stood out to me, of course, was the 12. Um, I was going to put the pictures of the disciples, but I don't know what they look like. So <laughs> that's a different thing. But he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. If you look at this verse, you can see that one of the first things that he did when he ordained them to ordain. Let me put this, this I didn't check what it means to ordain, but let me just. Does anybody know what it means to ordain? What does it mean to ordain? To authorize. To authorize, as, as I'm looking at uh, Google and it's agreeing, yes, to authorize. Thank you. Thank you, um, 
Godfrey. Yes, what does it? You can type it out if you can't speak. What does it mean to ordain? So he ordained twelve. Let me see if I can find it in another scripture. I did check before. I did a person with that. Yes. Okay. Nobody. I'll just quickly say. So it says to appoint, to induct, to authorize. Um. Is it reasons he chose? So he chose 12 people. And then you see the primary reason that he chose these 12 people is that set apart. Thank you, Ma. It's to ordain is to set apart. Thank you very much. That's anointing to anoint as well. Thank you. Anoint is another big word. So I don't I didn't know why I used that. That they should be with him. So that's the primary reason why he sends he, he ordained this people that they should be with me. And and is an addition that he might send them forth out to preach. So the primary reason why they were ordained, they were chosen, they were set apart, they were authorized, is not so that they can just go and preach, it's so that they will be with him. The reason why we have been called, it's funny that, that well, not funny, but it's interesting because that's most of primarily what, what we read. I'll just read it out to you. So if I see that I'm not, I'm not uh, making this up. He says, um, let me see. He says, What does God first do? I'm reading from my just so you know. I use a um a manual. This is um authorized by I want to say ordained. <laughs> this is authorized by the Redeemed Christian Church of God Sunday School and um, the um, school so from the Sunday school, and that's what we use. That's I, I don't make up all the topics that we're doing, so I'm just following the and this. And I'm reading this because he says, What does God first do to anyone he might choose to send for to preach? He makes no mistakes, he will send out a man he has not, he, has, he will not send out somebody he has not made ready for the task. And how does he make them ready? The place where he makes men is at his feet where his servants learn of him that's where we are made we are made we are made we are first set out at his feet and he gave an example of um, mary where mary um where mary was when um sorry when jesus came to visit um, mary and martha and lazarus um well we say mary and martha but lazarus was also there that's the brother of mary and martha when he came to visit them and Martha was going around doing things, you know, da, 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 that, you know, ah, that story. I will never forget when God used that, um, this thing to teach me that, you know, when you're doing all this work, all this work, but I like doing things. I want things to be arranged. I want things to be done. I want things to be organized. I'm like, da, 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 and everything. And then he was, he was saying, okay, cool down. I want you to sit down. I want you to, and anytime I don't listen to it, huh, something will happen and then, boom explosion from one way or the other so he i remember he would say in him you're getting too stressed out about many things see you have to sit down sit down and learn from me so that is one of the things that mary did and jesus said that she has chosen a good so it's a choice don't think that oh i have no choice i don't have a choice i have to be doing this i have to do that if i don't do this things will scatter Hmm, you're God now. <laughs> That's what me I used to say to myself. So, so don't worry, I'm not saying it to you. But if you heard God, if you heard Holy Spirit say that to you, then please repent because it's a repenting thing. So she said, he said, oh, that he has um for one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part. We shall not be taken away from her. The more you sit at his feet, the more you wait for him, the more you wait, um and um, learn from him those things that time it can never be taken off you know a lot of times there are, there are people that say that when you have okay let me, I, I heard this somewhere so as it and it's something that needs to i realize needs to change when people are poor poverty mentality quote and unquote when they have money what do they spend their money on they spend their money on buying things oh let me buy this thing let me buy this thing let me buy this thing this i'm reading this is what i read though is of the world i did not see it in the bible i'm not going to check on the bible but just bear with me you buy things you buy that you buy that but as you as they get um wealthier as people get wealthier they don't buy things as much what do they spend their money on they spend their money on experiences on experiences they want to travel around the world they want to go out and this is in they want to go and eat something they want to go and do this one they want to do that so like now it's less about the things that they own and more about the experiences because experiences can never be taken away from you instead 
you buy a new Nike shoe, the Nike shoe will spoil it, we end at some point. Oh, you buy this new Gucci bag. I'm using words that I don't, I don't know because I don't know if there's any other new designers or I am not into designers because I don't know them. But I know very why is into designers. So I don't know any, any of them. I'm, I'm bush like that. So he's the posh boy. So, you know, all those design, all those things, you can't buy them. And you'll be thinking, oh, yes, I bought all these things. I bought, but that's not the, this, you, the times that you remember is the time that you sat down and you were gisting with people. You were hanging out with friends. You, were, you don't remember like, oh, you bought shoes, you bought hair. They will pass away at some point. But those things do not pass away. So I don't know if that's, I don't know if that has set you, it has, changed your mind a little bit spend time with people spend time with and that's why god is always like as in pulling away one of the things he's always talking about is time 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 what do you spend your time on you know the, the money that you're earning is your time that you're they're paying you for your life that they're paying you for the time that you're spending in the office that's what they're paying you 10 pounds 42 per hour so it's not as if like oh you're like oh i must do um double shift three shift and yet your children are there your husband is there your um friends are there your pastor is there pastor please forgive me in jesus name <laughs> please so you know so you know you have you, you spend time with people and everything and then you, after you have spent time with those people that's when you now you 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 those are the experiences you remember oh we went on this trip we were hung out on this day we did those are the things you remember and i don't know if it's ministering to anybody here but truly, if you need to renew your mind, if you need to repent about what you're spending your time to do, that's one of the reasons why, you know, uh, Pastor Ra is always saying, when you're when the children are younger, don't spend so much time um, at work. Spend time with your children. Spend time. That's what they remember. That's what you remember. I remember um, the, the times that I spent the, when we were younger. We used to have Saturday and um, this is Saturday um Bible um, morning devotion. Ah, morning devotion Saturday. Oh, that's the longest devotion ever. Because you start at seven or at most eight. Twelve o'clock, you have not finished. We are still doing devotion, morning devotion. We are talking Bible. We are talking this one, this one, this one. and you start from maybe this Bible passage and we start talking about everything. I'm talking about when we we're young girl. Everything all the way to this and maybe and that's and those are the, the the memories I cherish. You know, I don't remember many of the other things. I don't remember many of the things that my, my parents bought for us and everything. But those are the things that I remember. And maybe for you, those are the things you remember experiences and stuff. So please, I don't know who I was talking to about that. So this is the this is and then Bible passage. So uh, spend time with your husband, spend time with your wife. Too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Spend time. That's very true. <laughs> okay, here is the word of God. And then we're well, going back to um the minister of the word, this is what Jesus did before he he chose those people. He said, Mark 3, 13 to 14, I said, he goes up into a mountain and call it, I'm going to read it in a different, I'm going to read it in a different version, sorry. I'll read it in easy to read version. Then Jesus went up on a hill and invited those he wanted to go with him. So they joined him there and he chose 12 men and called them apostles. He wanted his men his 12 men to be with him and he wanted to send them to other places to tell people God's message. He wanted them to be with him. He wanted, so that time that you're spending with the Holy Spirit, that time that you're spending with Jesus, spending with the word, you are attending to the word, you're ministering. That is what he's, that is the primary, everything from the very beginning has always been about relationship. If you look at Genesis chapter one, what did Jesus, what was God doing? God went and he brought man and then he created man and he put him in Eden and he said, Oh, God, um, take care of the plants, take care of the distance, take care of the thing. But one of the things that just God used to do, he said he used to come every evening to walk with. He wanted to spend time with man. But then, man, you know, you now be thinking that the most important thing is the eating that has been given to you. Meanwhile, the most important is the time that you should spend with God. I'm talking to us, so I don't know if that is ministering to any one of us. And it, uh, another thing, again, he says here is that a, it says here that a, a workman, you know, in, in 2 Timothy, I'll just read it out to us, 2 Timothy chapter chapter 2, verse 15. The workman, study to show thyself approved unto God, but um, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Easy to read. Do your best to be the kind of person God will accept and give yourself, give yourself to him. Be a worker who has no reason to be ashamed of his work, one who applies the true teaching in the right way. And it says here that the, 
the work that he says here, this means that a workman who is not approved of God will not divide the word of God correctly. He will not minister right because he had not been approved of God. But how do you get approved of God? How do you get approved of God? You spend time with the word. And God doesn't show people out. I was talking about it um, this morning. God doesn't, um, with um, I was talking uh, it's, God doesn't show people out just like that. It's not um, overnight success. There's a lot of work before you quote unquote blow, before you show, show forth. I don't even know how to. Before Jesus, before Jesus um, was um, announced to the world, there were 30 years where he, God was doing work at the back. Before what, um, John the Baptist was announcing this, thing, there was work that was done behind the scene. So God is working on you, but are you behind the scene with him? Are you setting up yourself apart with him? If you're not, then that's where the challenge is. And he says here that, um, so how, how do we, because many times we think that the primary purpose for us is to go out and preach to go out and preach you but the thing the primary purpose really is that relationship i want to use this opportunity to ask um i know i, I asked somebody to tell you know that relationship and but the first thing and the first and foremost thing is to first of all ask jesus to be lord and savior over your life that is the beginning of the relationship and i would ask one of us to please one of us to please just share that conversion story share where they accepted jesus as their lord and savior over their life anybody somebody share when you accepted jesus as your lord and savior you know i said i will be doing this every week every week somebody somebody has to just speak and say this is how i became born again anybody it doesn't have to be a long story because that is where relationship with God started. Anybody? Let's see. There are some people's stories I already know. Um, uh, you want to share mine? Okay. Uh, just a second. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but I can hear you. All right, so I I have the privilege of growing up in a Christian home, and um, my parents said they became born again when I was two months, and my dad was, you know, the choir master, my mom was a singer. And, uh, they did very well trying to bring us back in the love of the Lord. So I grew up from the children's department to teens, to the youth, to the adult. So, you know, that kind of lifestyle, no partying, no, you know, growing up in a church. Yeah. Love the fellowship with the brethren, and it was really a good community. So, but there was a big boss there. I was not about God all the while, but I didn't have a relationship with him. I didn't know what it meant to be a Christian. I didn't know what it meant. To be like someone that has Christ inside, knowing who God is, I really did not know. I enjoyed the fellowship with all that brethren, but the fellowship with, with Jesus, with God, I didn't have it. I didn't know it. I didn't know it. That was the big part. You know, this, I, I, I would describe it like a very beautiful casket with flowers around it, but inside is dead bone. Inside is dead bone, worthless bone. You know, so the outside is beautiful with flowers, but inside dead bones. So, but I started experiencing Christ when I was on campus in 2008. So I started experiencing Christ. It, it, the word of God became started making meaning to me. You know, before this time, I had no, I had no repentance when I was in church. He was doing all stuff, all sorts and all that. The good behavior, but I, I was not repentant. I have not repented. I didn't know Christ. So on campus, the experience started, and the word of God started making meaning to me. How did I know? Things started changing. The word of God started making meaning to me. I started loving the tree. I started loving the, the word before. You know, I think I just walk in the, in the church. I can just walk out from the walk out of the church, even when they're praying. When they, I didn't enjoy the word. I was not enjoying the prayers. I was not enjoying. I was not enjoying the relationship with Christ. But when I encountered Christ, 
that was when it's it all started. The expressive uh, my expresses with Christ started, and yeah, and I can't talk about my salvation story with without what happened to me in 2016, because it also reminded me that uh, it's reminded me really of the relationship I have with Christ. I I was in a program and after I was preaching. In fact, before the pastor even started preaching, he came out, he was just worshiping. And before he started crying, uncontrollably, I was crying. And there was this babe seated close to me, you know, with uh, the carnal mind, it would be like, oh, it's, it's nice weak, nice weak to be crying as a guy. But I was this babe seated close to me. I could not, at that moment, I could not, I didn't mind. I was crying. I was crying. Tears. Do you know that? That experience sat me for about a week. Whenever I remember the that, that thing will come again. But I was I knew that that brokenness had come. That brokenness, like I said, loving prayers, said loving the word, and all that. So that before lies disappear, the fear of hell before if you are up here, somebody speaks about hell around me, I'm off. I will be so scared, fear of death, stealing. You know, sometimes we are not slow, we are not sharp, they just you know, uh, we're just smart, but you, know, you don't know you are still in that job. So those things, the matters of our hearts disappeared and all those things. Yeah, so, and these things, every form of people this, this, uh, disappeared. So, yeah, that was nice. Uh, in a brief way, that was my salvation story. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Franklin. That's Mr. Fesborn Franklin. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was, I don't know, so I, I think, I, I don't know, I think maybe we should just stop there because I, I don't know if any of you felt how I was feeling um, when he was talking. You know, he says he said that, I'll just recap, he said that he grew up in church, he was a quote-unquote a good boy, but he didn't have a relationship, which is what we're talking about today. Um, um, in a way, I, I didn't really did delve into all the things I was supposed to say, but he was he didn't have a relationship with, with the word, he didn't have a relationship with God. Um, but when Jesus, or he had a relationship with Jesus, but when he, as he got old, um, got older, then there was a particular experience that he had where he, he was now broken and just, and the relationship with God just started and it, it suddenly, it, everything became fresh, you know, that's the thing about relationships that you're enjoying, you know, you don't want to go, you don't want to, you want to spend so much time with the person because you're, you're, you're enjoying the relationship, it's a relationship, it's not formal, it's not a formula, it's not a religious activity and i want to use this opportunity to ask anyone that has not received jesus as their lord and their savior you maybe you're playing religion you're playing church and i don't want you to think that oh people know me as this people know me as that I, it doesn't matter nobody cares the only person that should care is you and god where you're going to say spend eternity is the most important thing you're playing a religion or you're thinking that oh i'm actually okay because i grew up in a christian home no it's all about relationship your own personal relationship is about accepting jesus as your personal your own personal lord and savior so if you think that maybe you have been playing church for some for some years this is an opportunity for you to accept jesus as your lord and your savior there might be an opportunity today during service for you to to um ask Jesus to, to, to for you to make this public. Please take that opportunity. Don't be ashamed to come out because he says that if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before God. Do you know what Jesus does for us? He advocates for us. What does an advocate do? He defends us. He prays for us. He, he, he brings our own position towards God and everything. And he says that he'll be ashamed to do that if you're ashamed of him in public. So don't be ashamed. Come out. Have the boldness of Christ. You have the boldness of the Holy Spirit. Come out and 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 declare that yes you have actually accepted jesus as your, as your lord and savior and maybe next week you might be one of the people that would um share your own testimony to say this is how i receive jesus as my lord and my savior i want us to um i want to thank you very much for joining us and god bless you see you later at crawford house